what exactly is discernment? We have a jolly good ride today, so sit back and enjoy. But before I get into this video, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell to be notified when we upload a new video every time. God bless you. How do you know you have the spirit of discernment? What are the signs? First of all, discernment is the ability to distinguish the source of what is presented to you, knowing whether it is divine, demonic, or human. It may be in an atmosphere, encounter, person, event, or prophetic message. Let us see the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 4 to 11. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God Himself is behind it all. Each person is giving something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the spirits to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. Now that we have established that discernment is a gift of God and originates from God, let us move on to the signs that show how a person has a spirit of discernment. Sign number one. You have a desire for the gift. I have heard this saying multiple times. You have to desire it to get it. And I think it's true. Why do I think it's true? I think so because in my life, when I want something so bad, I desire it. I work towards it and finally, I get it. So with this issue of having a discerning spirit, you need to want it and if you find yourself wanting it, then you subconsciously work towards it and get it in no time. It comes with a natural desire to see things better and to know how this world works. You feel the urge to set people free from bondage, free from every form of captivity or demonic hold they might be going through. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it, because it does. Give yourselves to the gifts God gives you. Most of all, try to proclaim His truth. If you praise him in the private language of tongues, God understands you, but no one else does, for you are sharing intimacies just between you and him. But when you proclaim his truth in everyday speech, you're letting others in on the truth so they can grow and be strong and experience his presence with you. You find yourself longing to be more effective in spiritual activities and in your prayer life. You want to be part of spiritual warfares. You want to get solutions to the spiritual problems. You find yourself wanting to live a holy life. You find yourself wanting to live an example of your life that is filled with God's will. You do not want to see anything that is not of God prevail. Now you just want to always know more about God and the spiritual realm. And these are signs that you have the spirit of discernment. Please do not take these signs for granted as it could be the pathway to your ministry and calling for the ultimate purpose of your life and the main reason which God called you for. Focus on any sign you get and work in it to better your life and get your eyes wide open to the realities of this world and beyond. And that's what the spirit of discernment does for you. The next point is love for God's presence. This is no ordinary sign as this is one of the most confusing things a Christian can go through. God loves us all, but do we all love God? Hard question. You love God, but you do what he does not like. Is that love? Many Christians confuse themselves by saying they love God. But it's all bluffing because in real life they do not show God how much they love Him. Love is not an adjective or a noun. Love is a verb. And this would help you in your day-to-day -day activities. Never believe anyone who says mere words but does not show actions. Even God showed the action of sending His only begotten Son to die for us on the cross of Calvary to show us His love and wash away our sins. John 3 verse 16 to 18, it says, This is how much God loved the world. He gave His Son, His one and only Son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in Him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending His Son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. 
He came to help, to put the world right again. And anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refuses to trust him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one-of-a-kind Son of God when introduced to him. Now this scripture expresses God's love for us and shows us how good and perfect God's plan for us are. So if you find yourself loving the things of God and wanting to continually dwell in God's presence, then you might just have the spirit of discernment. Now all these signs might not work in you at the same time, but if you notice as little as one or two, you should pick that up as a clue and work towards this gift of discernment. Everyone should have it and use it to God's glory. Look, it's not for a particular set of people only. It's for everyone who believes in God. There's a saying, the highest use of the gift of discernment is not to see what the enemy is doing. It is to discern what the Spirit of God is doing. And I do not think there is anything more true. Most times we forget that the gift was not given to us to fight our problems and the devil because those things are distractions that make us start to focus on the devil with the gifts of God. We should focus solely on building up the kingdom of God with the gifts. Do not allow the devil to take advantage of you and the gift that God has given you by overwhelming you with problems that make you lavish your gift wastefully on the kingdom of darkness. The book of 1 Peter chapter 4 says, Everything in the world is about to be wrapped up, so take nothing for granted. Stay wide awake in prayer. Most of all, love each other as your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless cheerfully. Be generous with the different things God gave you, passing them all around so all get in on it. If words, let it be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. That way, God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus and he will get all the credit as the one mighty in everything and cause to the end of time. Oh yes. Use a discernment for the good of God's kingdom. The next point is sensitivity to the atmosphere. Discernment itself entails being sensitive. You may be more sensitive to spiritual atmospheres than most other people. In the early stages of developing the gift, you may be affected adversely by the presence of any demonic activity, especially when it's in the environment around you. The reality is that we live in a natural world and a spiritual world concurrently. In the Bible, when Jacob came across a group of angels, he named that place Mahanaim, meaning double camp. Genesis chapter 32 verses 1 to 2, it says, And Jacob went his way. Angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, Oh, God's camp! And he named the place Mahanaim, campground. Like Jacob realized, we also live in a double camp where there is constant spiritual activity. Those with a gift of discernment have spiritual senses that are attuned to this. Just like all the other prophets of God in the Bible who named places where they sense spiritual activity and the presence of God, they had the spirit of discernment also. Let us take for example Abraham. When God provided a ram in the place of his son for a sacrifice, he named the place of this event. In Genesis chapter 22, Abraham named that place God, Yireh. God sees to it. And that's where we get the saying, on the mountain of God, he sees to it. The spiritually sensitive person may be so pulled by spirit and transcendence that he or she loses touch with basic grounding on the imminent physical world. Such people need help with being grounded in their bodies and in their basic sense of power and gender to balance their sensitivity to the call of the spirit. I saw an article on the spiritual sensitivity of King David, and I think you should hear it. It says, David was a man who had a special sensitivity towards God. Many times before or during a battle, he would ask God what to do. When the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over Israel, they wanted to seek him and most likely take his life. Faced with this threat, David did not gather all his wise men together for advice or to strategize their defense. Instead, he looked to God for advice. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. Faithfully, David asked God an important question, and he was spiritually sensitive enough to hear God's answer. Not only did God listen and answer him, David also listened and followed God's instructions. And when we ask someone for advice, what we really are telling them is that their thoughts are worth a great deal to us. Every time David asked God for his will, 
It showed how much he valued God's thoughts and feelings. It is no wonder that David was called a man after God's heart. David was a man that had sensitivity even to God's feelings over situations. He wanted to know what God wanted at every point in time. Being spiritually sensitive is a sign of having a discerning spirit. The next point is feeling different from other people. Being different is a major, major factor that shows the spirit of discernment. And we're going to look at the story of Daniel having a spirit of discernment and discerning the environment he was in and knowing what to do at the given time. He was able to discern the spirit that was present at Babylon and he knew what to do to keep himself pure and consecrated for God's use. Daniel chapter 1 verses 1 to 20. It says, It was the third year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judah when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon declared war in Jerusalem and besieged the city. The master handed King Jehoiakim of Judah over to him along with some of the furnishings from the temple of God. Nebuchadnezzar took king and furnishings to the country of Babylon, the ancient Shinar. He put the furnishings in the sacred treasury. The king told Ashpenaz, the head of the palace staff, to get some Israelites from the royal family and nobility. Young men who were healthy and handsome, intelligent and well-educated, good prospects for leadership positions in the government, perfect specimens, and indoctrinate them in the Babylonian language and the lore of magic and fortune-telling. The king then ordered that they be served from the same menu as the royal table, the best food, the finest wine. After three years of training, they would be given positions in the king's court. Four young men from Judah, Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, were among those selected. The head of the palace staff gave them Babylonian names. Daniel was named Belteshazzar, Ananiah was named Shadrach, Mishael was named Meshach, Azariah was named Abednego. But Daniel determined that he would not defile himself by eating the king's food or drinking his wine. So he asked the head of the palace staff to exempt him from the royal diet. The head of the palace staff, by God's grace, liked Daniel. But he warned him, I'm afraid of what my master the king would do. He's the one who assigned this diet and if he sees that you're not healthy as the rest, he'll have my head. But Daniel appealed to a steward who had been assigned by the head of the palace staff to be in charge of Daniel, and Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Try us out for ten days on a simple diet of vegetables and water, then compare us with the young men who eat from the royal menu. Make your decision on the basis of what you see. The steward agreed to it and fed them vegetables and water for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked better and more robust than all the others who had been eating from the royal menu. So the steward continued to exempt them from the royal menu of food and drink and serve them only vegetables. Now God gave these four young men knowledge and skill in both books and life. In addition, Daniel was gifted in understanding all sorts of visions and dreams. At the end of the time set by the king for their training, the head of the royal staff brought them in to Nebuchadnezzar. When the king interviewed them, he found them far superior to all the other young men. None were a match for Daniel and Ananiah. Mishael and Azariah. And so, they took their place in the king's service. Whenever the king consulted them on anything, on books or on life, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his kingdom put together. Daniel understood certain principles and built his gifts for a time as this. He did not ignore the commands of God not to be defiled. He stuck with God's ways and ended up being the very best. Now, most people, even in church life, experience life through their natural senses. However, someone with a gift of discernment of spirits can see and sense things that others do not see. This ability can result in us feeling different, lonely, or misunderstood at times, especially when starting out. So it is vital that someone with a developing spirit of discernment finds a safe place to journey with others who are similarly gifted and accountable around them. What we also need to understand is that it is okay to feel different from others, especially if your assignments are not the same. Next point is confirmation of discernment gift by trusted leaders and God's servants. You may have the gift confirmed through the prophecy given to you. For example, my gift of discernment was identified through prophecy. Twice. Perhaps this was because I was reluctant to accept it. However, the bottom line of the presence of any gift is that it was identified and acknowledged by leaders in the church and that it is useful for its purpose, and that is to help build up the church and bring people closer to Jesus. When you submit what you're seeing or sensing, 
your leaders confirm your accuracy and your gift begins to be recognized for its effectiveness. Whenever a gift is used to criticize or tear down a church, person, or leader, you know it's being misused, or you may realize that it's simply a person's hurt or frustration masquerading as discernment. These kind of abuses are common and have brought disrepute to the gift of discernment. So I'll take some time over the next couple of posts to share how the gift of discernment can bring value to church life. Let us see the story of Samuel in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. Let us note that discernment can also mean hearing what others cannot hear. Samuel heard the voice of God, but Eli did not. 1 Samuel chapter 3 says, The boy Samuel was serving God under Eli's direction. This was at a time when the revelation of God was rarely heard or seen. One night, Eli was sound asleep. His eyesight was very bad and he could hardly see. It was well before dawn. The sanctuary lamp was still burning. Samuel was still in bed in the temple of God where the chest of God rested. Then God called out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Yes, here I am. Then he ran to Eli saying, I heard you call, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. And so he did. God called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. I heard you call, here I am. Again, Eli said, son, I didn't call you, go back to bed. This all happened before Samuel knew God for himself. It was before the revelation of God had been given to him personally. God called again, Samuel, a third time. Yet again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Yes, I heard you call me, here I am. And that's when it dawned on Eli that God was calling the boy. So Eli directed Samuel, go back and lie down. If the voice calls you again, say, speak God, I'm your servant ready to listen. Samuel returned to his bed. God said to Samuel, listen carefully, I'm getting ready to do something in Israel that is going to shake everyone up and get their attention. The time has come for me to bring down on Eli's family everything I warned him of, every last word of it. I'm letting him know that the time's up. I'm bringing judgment on his family for good. He knew what was going on, that his sons were desecrating God's name and God's place, and he did nothing to stop them. This is my sentence on the family of Eli. The evil of Eli's family can never be wiped out by sacrifice or offering. And God came and stood by him exactly as before, calling out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, I'm your servant ready to listen. The sermons can also be a means of God passing a message and hearing from God. Our next point is when you have the Spirit of God. Finally, it is the duty of every child of God to be able to discern. I waited patiently for this last point to pour out almost everything that the Holy Spirit has taught me on this topic. Talk about saving the best for the last, huh? Yeah. The book of Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 5 prophesies about the Spirit of God and His function. It says, A green shoot will sprout from Jesse's stump, from his roots a budding branch. The life-giving Spirit of God will hover over him, a Spirit that brings wisdom and understanding, a Spirit that gives direction and builds strength, a Spirit that instills knowledge and the fear of God. Fear of God will be all his joy and delight. He won't judge by appearances. He won't decide on the basis of hearsay. He'll judge the needy by what is right, render decisions on earth's poor with justice. His words will bring everyone to awed attention. A mere breath from his lips will topple the wicked. Each morning, he'll pull on sturdy work clothes and boots and build righteousness and faithfulness in the land. The working of the Holy Spirit is power to do everything that God has put into making you more powerful and above the natural man that you were born as. It is the transformation of your carnal self into a different spirit self. The mortal body has no say. There is no will for feelings. It affects everything you do in your daily life. It distinguishes you and influences your world from the inside. You are no longer caught under the cosmos, which is the social system of the world. Having the Holy Ghost inside of you is a source of every gift that was laid out in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22. It says, But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruits appears in an orchard, things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity, we develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. 
We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that the fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good. Crucified. So you having the spirit of discernment is not an option for a child of God who is full of the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is groom that gift to be God conscious. Like you said at the beginning of this video, the devil is out to divert your gifts to be used for him. Yes, your gifts can be used in the kingdom of the devil. Do not let this happen to you. Stay God conscious. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you watched this video this far and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Now don't forget to turn on your notification button on to get notified immediately when we upload new videos. And comment below what topics you want us to make a video on and let us know your thoughts on this particular subject. God bless you and Jesus loves you perfectly.